Hello, welcome to our Cisco Cybersecurity Operations video series. This lesson is about web application attacks. In this lesson, we'll talk about how to execute and mitigate web application attacks such as SQL injection, command injection, and cross-site scripting. Structured Queried Language, or SQL, is used to query, operate, and administer database systems such as Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, and so on. One of the most common SQL attacks is the SQL injection attack. A successful SQL injection exploit can read sensitive data from the backend database. It can also modify or delete data or execute administration operations. Sometimes it can even issue commands to the operating systems. So, for example, a web page might authenticate requesting a username and password. Once the user provides the information, it is passed to the backend database to validate the credentials in order to permit access. This is where the threat actor can supply specially crafted data in the SQL injection attack, which has a malicious code. Instead of authenticating the user, it may cause the application to display the contents of the user database. Successful SQL injection attacks can have far-reaching implications. This actually occurred back in 2012 when a hacking group collected the email credentials for 450,000 users using an SQL injection attack against an unnamed Yahoo subdomain. SQL injection attacks can be used to bypass authentication, disclose confidential information, and distribute malicious code. This makes SQL servers a high-value target for threat actors. The SQL injection attack uses attacker supply data to alter web application SQL statements. Unless an application uses strict input data validation, it is vulnerable to this attack. In fact, the Open Web Application Security Project, or OWASP, lists it as the number one threat to web applications. Now let's look at some various SQL injection attacks. First is authentication bypass. Here it allows an attacker to log onto an application without supplying a valid username and password. Next is information disclosure. Here it is used to obtain sensitive information from a database. Third is compromise availability of data. Here, the compromised data integrity involves altering the contents of a database to either deface a web page or insert malicious content. Compromised availability of data allows an attacker to delete information to either cause harm or delete log and audit information. And finally is the remote command execution. Here, it allows an attacker to compromise the host operating system. Now let's talk about how to mitigate SQL injection attacks. Intrusion prevention system or IPS signatures can be used to detect and prevent SQL injection attacks as long as it has visibility into the application traffic. End-to-end -end encryption with HTTPS, for example, hinders the ability of the IPS to spot the signatures of the attack. You should be sure to update to IPS with the latest and most current signature releases in order to detect new threats that are continually being developed by the threat actors. Here is a generic signature for detecting SQL injection attacks from SNORT, which is actually a free open source network intrusion detection system, or NIDS. This signature relies on regular expressions for the IDS to work properly. The following is a list of regular expressions. You know, now everyone is fluent, right, in using expressions and their use and signatures can make it appear very complicated and confusing. But fortunately, there are many examples available out there. So examining these examples and the built-in snort signatures will help you in developing your own custom rules to detect attacks.